welcome to To Your Health. This is November, and November is the National Diabetes Awareness Month. Uh, we're going to talk about what causes diabetes, the effect it can have on people, and how to prevent and treat diabetes. Uh, joining me today is my co-host, Dr. Laura Boyd, who is a medicine, family medicine uh, physician here at the Elmer's Clinic. And our guest today is Dr. Susan Hudick, who is an endocrinologist with Elmhurst Clinic. But first of all, Dr. Hudick, what's an endocrinologist? So I get that question a lot. And an endocrinologist is a doctor that deals with hormones, or essentially the glands in the body. Um, and primarily what we do is treat diabetes. About 50 to 60% of the patients we see is for a type of diabetes. Dr. Boyd, um, I want to give our viewers an idea of just how serious this problem is in this country, and it really is a serious problem. Yes, the numbers are quite shocking. Um, over 30 million Americans have diabetes, and over 1.5 million cases are new every year that come up, and it's the seventh leading cause of death. Um, over $245 billion of medical costs are spent on diabetes alone. Seventh cause of death. That really that kind of scares me because I never, yeah. I never realized that. Correct. I, I don't think most of our viewers realize that it's diabetes, you treat it, you live with it, but it causes Correct. death, but not necessarily only from diabetes, but from the side effects. Correct. It's all the consequences that come from diabetes. Uh, right. These are some pretty scary st statistics, and, and I imagine both of you um, uh, make it very clear to your patients that diabetes is something that needs to be diagnosed, needs to be treated, and you really need to pay attention to, you need to pay attention to your body. Correct. You know, um, let's start with the basics, Dr. Hudick. Please walk us through the types of diabetes. Okay, so there are essentially three basic types of diabetes. Type one diabetes is uh, diabetes we see in younger patients, typically in children, although it can happen at any age. And that's where your pancreas, which is the, the organ that makes insulin, stops working entirely um, and it needs to be replaced with insulin. I thought you needed your pan pancreas to survive. I didn't think you could survive without You pancreas. do, you need your pancreas to survive. And if your pancreas stops working, it's really important to replace that with insulin and with medications um, and fairly intensive insulin therapy um, so those patients can maintain normal blood sugar levels. Um, and the more common type of diabetes in the United States, about 85 to 90 percent of the type of diabetes we see is type 2 diabetes, which is a more gradual onset and typically happens in older patients, although again can happen at any age and we're seeing more cases younger. In this case, your pancreas is still working, but your body doesn't respond well to the insulin anymore. So your pancreas has to make more insulin and eventually can stop making insulin because it's being so overworked. That type of insulin can be treated with medications or with insulin, with diet and exercise. And type two is the one that you hear most about. Correct, absolutely. That's the most, we, type we, most common type we see. There's another one that I never really realized, uh, gestational. Absolutely. Diabetes? Yeah, so gestational diabetes is the type of diabetes that happens in pregnancy. So during a pregnancy, you need about 50% more insulin than you would normally need. And some women are unable to make that extra insulin for the baby. And in those women, they develop diabetes at some point during their pregnancy and might need insulin or medications. Now, those women long term are at a high risk to develop type 2 diabetes. About 50 to 60% of those women will go on to de develop type 2 later in life. So there still is a risk that it could linger on Correct. beyond the pregnancy. Correct, yeah. So it can affect the mom long term. Absolutely. But does it affect the baby? If the blood sugars are normal during the pregnancy, then, that, then it should not affect the baby. But there is high risk for the baby. If the blood sugars are high, the baby can develop birth defects or be too large upon birth. So it's very important that those women very closely monitor their blood sugars to keep them and, a, and tightly you, controlled. And you can treat a mom that is pregnant. Absolutely. Like most of those women get treated with insulin because it's safest for the baby, um, but they can absolutely be treated during a pregnancy and keep those sugars normal. And you should be eating right and exercising Correct. even more so then because absolutely. you're taking care of the two of you. Absolutely. You absolutely. know, Dr. Boyd, um, we also hear a lot about pre-diabetes. Can you please explain what pre-diabetes is? And I'm sure as a family physician, that's where you find it first. 
Correct, and those are the patients that you really want to spend the time talking to about preventing diabetes in the future. So prediabetes is when we start seeing that their fasting glucose is getting a little bit elevated, or we might go ahead and check an insulin level and it shows that the insulin levels are higher, meaning the body's working a lot harder to try and bring down the glucose in their system. Often they might have some risk factors, like they might have had gestational diabetes or they have a strong family history. The, the strongest risk factor is the obesity though, and that's the one thing that we can talk to patients about, improving their diet, starting to exercise regularly, and to prevent diabetes in the future. Well, you know, and in this country, I, I, I sorry, it, obesity is very prominent because everything is the um, pump it up soft yeah. drinks. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. It's Absolutely. the, the it, it's <laughs> fast food yeah. and mm -hmm. and instead of just a single burger you're going to get the, the double, double or now the triple yeah. burgers. Yeah. And with bacon on it. Yeah, well, exactly. Of course with bacon yeah. on it. You know Absolutely. everything that's not good is what's really good. Right. You know um, but that's what this country does and we don't right. exercise it. We we take the car to the local fast food facility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and we walk maybe three feet to the door mm -hmm. yeah. and then order, sit down, eat, and then walk three feet out to the car to take us home. It's maybe a two block walk right. Correct. that you Correct. should be doing anyway. Correct. I wanted to take the car to the mailbox and the mailbox <laughs> is on the corner, yes. you know, but it's cold out. Yes. So, I mean, it's just, it's part of who Americans are, Correct. but we really right. need to start Something fast that. and easy and, right. you know, and I think that's the thing that I talk to patients most about is there are other choices sometimes at these fast food places, you know, get the chicken sandwich or don't get it fried, mm -hmm. don't get the french fries, get the water instead of the soda, you know, I try to work with them mm -hmm. based on their lifestyle, what will work for them so that they can go forward and lose weight and still have their busy lifestyles. Because I think that as a nation, we realize this is a problem and, and the restaurants are trying to make an effort to offer healthy options, but you just have to make the choice to pick that option yeah, when you're there. Yeah, do. And, and we as Americans tend not to eat right. When you're yeah. in Italy where pasta is prominent, it's a small dish of pasta mm -hmm. before the meal. It's just, it's small. It's, yes. Here, right. it's a pound, yeah. right? <laughs> and I don't want to tell you how many pounds it's putting onto your hips and right. to your health. Right, yeah. it's about portion control too. So you don't have to give up all those foods you love, but you really just need to pay attention to how much of it you're eating. Well, that was something, and we're probably jumping around a little bit here, but we're talking about food. First of all, I think we need to start teaching our children, very young in life, right. put the apple on the table instead of the Tootsie Roll, right. Uh, right. things like that. But we just we tend to jump to the wrong foods first we we tend to um just eat the, juice for example mm -hmm. we want to give our children right. juice but right we were just saying before the show water is the best thing oh, correct yes. yes what about the juice from a fresh piece of fruit really any kind of juice is is not good because when you're taking the juice from a fresh fruit you left all the fiber and the good stuff behind and you've only taken out the sugar so instead of squeezing the piece of fruit just Go ahead and give them a piece of fruit and have a glass of water with it. Eat the whole piece of fruit. Correct. Yes. Peel an orange. Have Correct. the orange. Peel an uh, cut. Don't even peel an apple because the skin is very healthy. Yeah. Wash right. it though. Yeah. Yes. Wash it. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then cut it and have yeah. a, a piece of fruit with, right. with the, mm -hmm. a, a drink of water. Mm -hmm. That's the way we should be eating, but right. that's it's why hard. we have to yeah. keep yeah. working on it. Right. Um, uh, what about diabetes symptoms? What can we be looking for? What what are the first indicators? Well, unfortunately, most people don't have symptoms, um, and that's the that's the problem. And so many times patients will come in the first time, it's when some screening labs are done that they realize they have diabetes. But some symptoms where the glucose is, is gonna be quite elevated, uh, patients might be experiencing increased urination, they might be thirsty all the time, um, they may be complaining of blurred vision even, or burning sensation, tingling in their hands and their feet. Um, for patients that most commonly is with type 1 diabetes, that they'll have a significant weight loss, not usually with type 2, it's usually the other um, problem is the, the, that they tend to be overweight. Um, but those are some of the symptoms, sometimes fatigue, but those symptoms really come when someone has had diabetes for some time and the glucose is quite elevated. So the the most patients that I see don't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the problem is that people, unless they're getting checked or they know their risks, they don't know that they're gonna develop it. Mm -hmm. Again, the reason they should have an annual 
Physical. Yes. Correct. Correct. It's right. better to prevent than to Absolutely. cure or Correct. try right. to cure mm -hmm. or, or, you know. Catch it later. Catch yeah. it later. Mm -hmm. It's just so much better. Um, Dr. Hudik, can you talk about the effects of diabetes? That you know, how it can, what kind of effects does it yes. have on people? So uh, the problem with diabetes long term is that it, it affects so many different organs in the body and leads to so many different problems. Um, the big two big categories that can affect kind of the small blood vessels in the body and the small nerves and then the big blood vessels in the body. So when we talk about small things, we talk about the small blood vessels in your eyes can kind of cause them to bleed and can lead to blindness over time and loss of vision. It can also affect the small blood vessels and nerves in your feet and cause numbness and tingling and burning in your feet, really terrible pain in your feet, and eventually loss of feeling in your feet altogether, which can lead to infections and, and long-term amputations. In addition, it affects those big blood vessels, which can lead to strokes, heart attacks, affects the blood vessels in your kidneys, which can lead to kidney failure, long-term dialysis, or kidney transplants. It causes a lot of long-term big problems. Well, you know, something else that surprised yeah. me, and um, I, 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 diabetes can affect your hearing. Correct, right. I never, never would have thought about your, I knew yes. about the eyes, maybe because of all the commercials on television right. that tell you how to cure all your problems without seeing right. your doctor or telling right. your doctor what to do, right. which annoys me to no end. <laughs> um, but uh, it affects your hearing, and yeah. the other association it had was to Alzheimer's. Correct, yes, yeah. so uh, the thought is likely that diabetes affects those small blood vessels again in the brain, and over time, as those blood vessels are damaged, they can affect long-term memory and increase your risk for Alzheimer's disease when you become older. So you never, mm -hmm. I would have never even given that a thought. I mean, they're just, they right. don't seem to be connected, but again, it's affecting the flow of blood. Yes, it affects everything because it affects those blood vessels and those nerves throughout the whole body. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the the whole thought of diabetes is very, very scary, mm -hmm. and I think we take a lot of it, um, I think we take a lot of it for granted. Um, Dr. Boyd, tell us about how you work with patients who have diabetes. I would imagine that um, that this may be, that might be very challenging, especially when you're telling a parent that their child might be at risk of diabetes. Correct. So the first thing I always talk about is the, the diet and the exercise. These are the two things that people can control. They have power over that, and that's what I talk to patients the most about, that diabetes can be controlled and even reversed with the changes that they can do in their lifestyle by eating healthier, being more active, exercising, keeping their weight where it should be based on their height. And that is the first line, you know. Once, sometimes, unfortunately, patients do these things and sometimes they can't reverse it um, based on genetics, but most of the time they can make some significant changes and then the next step would be oral medications and then sometimes, unfortunately, then we send over to the endocrinologist when it's uncontrolled and they have to go to insulin and, and so forth. But the first thing always is the diet and exercise. We start to talk about that. You know, I really talk to patients about what are they doing? What are they having for breakfast? What are you having for lunch? What are your snacks? And really trying to figure out what would be the best plan to help you know, decrease the numbers or improve their numbers or even reverse it all together. And that was something that to me is very interesting. You can reverse diabetes. Yeah, type two, yes. Type 100%. two you can. Type Absolutely. one is permanent. It's, it's, it's yeah. permanent. Correct. Um, and it's not something you really have a lot of control over you. Correct. That once you've had it, you just have to control it and work with it. But type so. two is controllable and you can be you can be on insulin. We were talking before the show yes, about yes. someone that yeah. you actually knew that actually had yeah, insulin. Yeah, I had one of my patients that was um, you know type two but on insulin for a number of years and she just finally made some significant changes in her lifestyle and exercise, started exercising on a regular basis, lost 60 pounds and is on absolutely nothing anymore. I mean the funny thing was recently we were just trying to get insurance to drop the fact that she had diabetes because then a lot of things were oh, coming up right. but it's been five years and she's been off of all of it and it's just awesome and amazing but it just shows um, for patients that they can make these changes and get off these meds 
supplements because often people don't want to be on medications, you know, mm -hmm. and they're upset about being on them and they don't want that extra one. But, you know, what my job is to make sure that the glucose is controlled so they don't get those long term consequences. Right. And so, so, unfortunately, sometimes we're adding and adding and adding more medications or adding insulin to bring those numbers down when really they can just make some significant changes to their diet and exercise. And a lot of times medication have side effects. I mean, everything is good Correct. for you. There are side effects, right. so you try to avoid Absolutely. all of that. And if you lose the weight, you're also going to change a lot of other issues that you might have. Correct. Hips, knees, mm -hmm. ankles, issues that as a general practitioner you would see um, every day. So you're helping your entire body, you know, and, and the exercise, you're helping your lungs. Yeah. Right, yes. you know, your heart, everything. Yep. Every, yeah, everything, sure. everything in its place, mm -hmm. including the food. And I think that's really, really important. We just continuously have to preach uh, about eating habits, uh, mm -hmm. especially here in this country. Um, we were also saying, and I don't know that we mentioned it here, um, it's not the sugar. It's not the sweet things. Right. We talked about the juice and it's the water. Not and the, the dessert. It's the carbohydrates, right? So it's all the starches. People don't think about the pasta, the pizza, the potatoes, French fries. Those are the things that are really going to make your blood sugar go through the roof. Rice, you know, that takeout Chinese food is going to make your blood sugar go through the roof. It's not necessarily that scoop of ice cream, although that's not good for you either. <laughs> no, but, but, but everything um, in moderation. But, right, exactly. So it's sometimes these things that you don't necessarily associate with blood sugar are the ones that are going to make it go up the highest. Well, and, and that to me is just interesting because you say, oh, diabetes, it's sugar, it's sugar. It's not. It's not sugar. It's correct. what turns to sugar in your system. Correct. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and how your system handles it. Now, I could eat a pound of pasta and it wouldn't it wouldn't affect my blood sugar Correct. somebody else next right. to me it will immediately aff affect their right. blood sugar it's Correct. just different people different bodies Correct. so we can't compare one another we have to see our doctor to find out about that yeah. this is an awful lot of information <laughs> to take in in such a short time um, uh, but if you are someone you know uh, is at risk you really need to contact Dr. Boyd is a first line of attack, then uh, she would refer you to Dr. Hudak. And these are, it's really important. And I know we're going to be repeating this again, but I want to know how we can lower our risk of diabetes. This is repeat yeah, on sure. the same mm -hmm. show, but the more we can repeat it, the more people will maybe pay attention to it. Correct, just staying active, exercising on a regular basis, um, eating healthy, you know, choosing the vegetables and the fruits over the fast foods, you know, and talking to your doctor about getting yearly checkups and to know that your risks are so that you can prevent it in the future. And the other thing is smoking. Oh, yes. Smoking. And you know what? thing we never even mentioned. <laughs> yeah, no, because huge. so many yeah. adults yeah. today are not smoking, but we're finding that Correct. young people yes. are oh, starting yeah. to smoke. Yeah. Yes. It's like, yeah. where is this coming from? Right. Yeah, and smoking. Significantly increase your risk of heart disease everything. and stroke and, and everything. And everything. Yes. And it's like, Absolutely. oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So smoking also yeah. is something. Oh, yeah. That affects diabetes. It affects your body yes. in that way. Yes. So your some risk. final words, ladies. This is National Diabetes Awareness Month, and we yes. do want our audience to really to pay attention, yes. to watch out for one another, watch out for their friends, their family. Mm -hmm. If you are suspicious, as I said, see your doctor. Mm -hmm. Or if your friend is not feeling well and you have this conversation, encourage them to see their doctor. This is important. Yeah. So what are your final words? That was my final line. <laughs> we want to encourage everyone to make sure that they have their sugar checked every year. As Dr. Boyd mm -hmm. pointed out, some people aren't symptomatic. You can go about life and think you feel fine, um, but your sugar is starting to go up. So it's really important to go for that routine physical, that yearly physical. Well, to diabetes check is pretty much a silent killer. Correct, yes. exactly. Yeah, you don't yeah, know somewhere. you have it. Right. Yes. Correct. You know, I think in starting with the whole family, I tell parents all the time, you know, kids are watching what you're doing, you know, and it, no one needs it in the house. So take all the chips out, take all the extra cookies out, take all the extras out and eat healthy as a family because that's really what benefits the kids that come adults um, with these healthy lifestyles that starts when they're young. You can have it as a special treat but when they're around just a little too much, I mean, I don't think you should deprive yeah. yourself and have that terrible craving. 
Correct. But there's Correct. the craving in just taking a, a small amount of something as yes. opposed to Correct. eating the whole bag of chips. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but if yes. you eat less of it, you'll crave it less too. You know, when people take more of that sugar out, then the natural sugars start to taste better. You know, if you're not so used to having that Coke every day, an apple mm-hmm. tastes better because you're used to that natural sugar. You, you taste buds. Right. That's what they say about smokers who quit smoking. Oh, they yeah. taste the they food, can. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, which I've been tasting for years and I love the taste of food. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Dr. Uh, Boyd and Dr. Hudick, it's been really enlightening today and I think we really, I think we've accomplished a lot by getting the word out and now all we have to do is hope that everyone truly pays attention and uh, observes uh, National Diabetes Awareness Month. Be aware. Well, thank you all for joining me. I'm Lucille Zuccaro with Dr. Laura Boyd and Dr. Susan Hudick, and here's to your health.